Hey, peace students, let's get to our first word for chapter 20, which is Macau. Macau is a trading port that the Portuguese had in China. It's where China allowed Portuguese traders to come in, one of the very few spots the Chinese allowed Europeans to come in and trade. Uh, therefore, what we saw here was a lot of trade going on. The Jesuits were able to establish a presence in Macau where they were able to get a lot of converts to Catholicism as well, which later will cause conflict in China. But it becomes a place where cultures meet and trade happens during this era. The Jesuits. The Jesuits started during the Counter-Reformation or Catholic Reformation. It is an order in the church where people were trying to live a life following the example of Jesus and doing a lot of especially prayer with the examen, which we know very well in our school. Um, the Jesuits were started by um, St. Ignatius of Loyola, and today the Jesuits are very well known for their schools, which they didn't want to start at first, but for schools which are all over the world and have typically done a very good job. Our own crystal ray. The Kangxi Dictionary was uh, started by the Qin Dynasty, also known as the Manchus. It gets a bit confusing, but we think Qin, think Manchus. And it was basically a way to formalize the language and words used in Chinese of this era. Remember, in Chinese, basically every symbol is a word, and this contained over 42,000 characters for people to use, and it kind of standardized the writing in China at this time. The collection of books, which was started by the same uh, Empire of the Qin Dynasty, or the Manchus, uh, K Emperor Kangxi, and this was very similar to an encyclopedia, where it was a way to get much of the knowledge that existed, bring it together so people could look at it, that was in China during this time period of the Qing Dynasty. Journey to the West was written by Zhang Zhang, and this was a book which basically talked about Zhang Zhang's travels to India, because uh, he was a Buddhist, and it was his pilgrimage or his tra travels to India, where Buddha was from, and what he brought back with his sacred writings that brought back to China. And this is really important because this helps Buddhism continue to spread in China. Uh, the Golden Lotus is basically a Chinese book that was composed in vernacular Chinese at this time in the Ming Dynasty. And it's really a book that focuses on uh, manners in China. And, and the most important thing you really need to know about this book is that it is really the first, basically was seen as modern novel that is written in China. The Dream of the Red Chamber is similar at this time. It is a novel that is written in China. And it's a romance novel, and it really documents what life was like in the aristocracy or for the rich nobles that lived in China during this time in the Qing Dynasty. Haikus are very short poems. They only have 17 syllables in three lines. They describe the beauty in nature, and they were written, and it was a form of art and poetry that existed this time in Japan, and they still exist today, and many people have fun enjoyment trying to read these and create these type of poems. Kabuki theater, which can be translated as the art of singing and dancing, is a Japanese theater which is known for its elaborate makeup and design that was worn in this time in Japan. Um, very dramatic, lots of singing uh, that goes. It's a uh, Pretty dramatic plays that happen that are kind of like over the top with emotions. That was very uh, popular at this time period in Japan. Pretty important one here, Ming Dynasty. The Ming Dynasty, they overthrow the Yaun Dynasty, Y-U-A-N, which was run by the Mongols. So this is basically when the ethnic Chinese, or kind of the return of the Han Chinese basically, uh, reestablish their power in China. They rule from 1368 to 1644. Um, they're famous for rebuilding the Great Wall of China. The current Great Wall of China that you see today was built during the time of the Ming Dynasty, even though it was started way back with the Qin Dynasty. Also known for having uh, voyages of Zheng He and, other, um, and ships that went into the Indian Ocean for trade, although they stopped that 
a focus on building the wall and agriculture, which could be argued will start leading to a downfall in China. And they are eventually taken over by the Qing Dynasty, who are also sometimes called the Manchus. They were from Manchuria, more of nomadic people who were from Manchuria, who came in and took over China and then spread their dynasty, which ruled from 1644 till 1911. That's pretty crazy. Just over 100 years ago, the Qing Dynasty was still in power. And the Qing Dynasty will also enlarge China. Their Manchurians, where the Manchurians will have more power in China than the ethnic Han. And you can call this the last dynasty in China, unless you want to call communism a dynasty, which will come up in our in a couple of eras in the future. Beijing is the current capital of China, and it is just a massive city. Uh, Beijing was first started by the Mongols, actually built it during the Yang dynasty. It will become a northern capital in China, and eventually will become its capital. Uh, it will also be famous for having the Forbidden City, where the emperors live and other people are not allowed to go in China as well during the Ming and Qing empires. Nanjing was a southern capital in China, which had a lot of power during the Ming dynasty, um, a little bit less during the Qing dynasty, and will eventually lose importance to Beijing. But it was a major city and a major capital that existed in China during this time period. The Forbidden City in Beijing. The Forbidden City was where the emperors had their quarters. It is where also there were the concubines, the wives um, of the emperors as well. And a lot of the internal politics and decisions in China were made. Um, it was basically the seat of power uh, that existed in China at this time. And if you were a regular citizen, you were definitely not allowed in the Forbidden City. It was forbidden except for people who were closest to the emperor. Tibet. Tibet is in a very mountainous region of China, and it's definitely located to what would be considered the western part of China. It is a place where Buddhism is very strong. Tibet was independent until the Qing dynasty took it over, and it is still an area in uh, China today where uh, there's a struggle for independence as many people in Tibet want to have their freedom and want to be separate from China, but China wants to keep it for strategic purposes. So this was taken into China in the Qing Dynasty. Xinjiang is in western China. It is an area of mountains. It is an area where there's more of a Turkish language that is spoken that connects it to um, uh, more areas of Central Asia. And it is very different than the rest of China. It's also a majority Muslim population. And today there are people in this area like the Uyghurs who live there, who are Muslim and see more of their ties with Central Asia Muslims than with China. So there are separation movements that they want to be, they don't want to be part of China. Many people there don't want to be part of China anymore. And also that many people in this area say they don't have as many rights as other people from China, especially more of your Han Chinese that exist in South and Southeast China. The White Lotus Rebellion. Now, the White Lotus Society began during the Yang Dynasty and rebelled and fought against the Yang Dynasty. Then we had the Ming Dynasty, which was mostly Han Chinese. So people from White Lotus were mostly Han Chinese in the Ming Dynasty. Uh, people who we would consider more ethnic Chinese who wanted their own, in the, their own empire and got the Ming Dynasty. When the Qing Dynasty gets established, they rebel against the Manchus who come in and have a rebellion trying to reestablish Han Chinese instead of Manchus as the leaders in China. Kyoto is a modern city in Tokyo today, and Kyoto was a power center during the Japanese daimyo, where it um, uh, was overtaken, and it will become a capital until it's eventually replaced by Edo, which is modern-day Tokyo. So Kyoto was a capital of, um, uh, in for the daimyo in Japan until Edo becomes the capital. Edo today is called Tokyo. It becomes the capital of Japan during the Tokugawa shogunate, which is ruling Japan at this time.
The period of great peace was during the Tokugawa Shogunate. For 250 years, the Tokugawa Shogunate took power and had no civil war or rebellion from 1603 to 1867.